Howdy, everybody, and welcome back. It's been a minute since I've been here. Uh, we had a week off last week because it was a fifth Thursday, which is always a week that I like to take off for myself to just catch up and rest and relax and regroup. And here we are, starting off April with a bang. We've got our... Um, challenge going on. It started on Tuesday. We've got tons of participation. So everyone who is out there for the challenge, welcome. If this is your first time here with Running With Scissors. I'm glad to have you here. Hello to everyone else that has been with me for the last couple of years doing this live stream every Thursday. And we have tons of fun with all of our crafty supplies and doing really great projects along the way. So hello, if you are new to my channel, you don't feel like being a lurker? Say hello down in the chat box. Tell us where you're from. We always like to know what the weather is in your area. Today in Nebraska, it is cold and windy and rainy, sleety, gross, like a typical spring day. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm supposed to be nicer this weekend, but guess what? I'm going to be in Florida at NAMTA Creativation, and I'm gonna be having a great time with lots of crafty friends and checking out all sorts of new craft stuff. I'm really so excited to be down there, and we're gonna have a good time. Anyway, hey guys, we've got so much to go through today because we do have the challenge going on this month. Let's get to our announcements. You know, like I like to run through these really quick. The Stamp Focus Challenge started on Tuesday. We've got a hundred participants, tons and tons of participants out there. So if you are not a part of this challenge yet, you can still uh, join in. So go to join.bloomcrafters.com slash challenge and join in the stamp focus challenge for this month. We're going to be using the same stamp set that we're using here. Um, everyone got access to the techniques that we're going to be doing today. They already got access to the techniques. They got their technique sheets. They've been practicing. I'm going to show you some of their practice runs uh, in a minute here. And um, we've been just talking it up and having a great time. So it's already a very engaged community and I would love to have you a part of it. So do check out the challenge. We'll be talking about that throughout today's broadcast. Um, wanted to let you know that May we're going to be doing hot foil. So get out all of your hot foil stuff, whether it's, you know, a toner hot foil or hot foil gel or your new um, uh, foil plates and all that kind of fun stuff. We're going to be doing foil all month, all sorts of different things. Um, so questions about foil and um, how you can use it in your projects. We'll be talking about that all next month. Uh, don't forget that if you're looking for some technique sheets, you can get started with your very own technique binder, just like mine, um, by getting my technique freebie. It comes with a whole bunch of techniques, uh, just like these, and you can start creating your own technique binder. It's going to get you started on some of the core things that I really think are important uh, when it comes to uh, creating, especially in mixed media, lots of great mixed media ideas in that freebie. Um, as always, if you are inspired by anything on my channel, I would love for you to tag me on Instagram at Nicole Watt Creates. I always love to see what you're creating and how you're inspired by anything I do here, whether it's a technique or a project, a live stream like today. Um, I'd love to see what you're doing, so don't forget to tag me. Thank you. Um, and there are all of our supplies for today are listed down in the description below. There's also a link um, pinned in the chat. Those are affiliate links. If you do click on those links and do some shopping, I may receive a small commission, always at no additional cost to you. It's a great way to support crafters uh, that are out here blogging and providing you with tons of inspiration every day. All right, so no cost to you, um, and it really helps us out a lot. And of course, as always, you can support me directly by using the link to my tip jar. It'll send you over to PayPal where you can give me a tip for a cup of coffee to keep this crafty content flowing. And thank you to Aaron for throwing some tips in the jar the last couple of weeks. I really appreciate it, Aaron. Um, and of course, if you're not already a, subs a subscriber, please do click on that subscribe button. Um, let YouTube know that you love my content. Give today's video a big thumbs up so that uh, you can see more of my content in the algorithm. Um, so guys, I want to go and do a little bit extra today because we are, um, like I said, we just started the challenge. I've been blown away by everyone participating in the challenge so far and everything that you guys have, ooh, that's fun, um, everything you guys have uh, created. 
Um, so here are some of the things that folks have been working on. We've been talking about doing curved sentiments and we've been talked about doing these saturated backgrounds. And so everyone's been having fun practicing the techniques and doing some really amazing work. I wanted to showcase some of the projects that people have been sharing, some of their works in progress, some of their experimenting. I mean, this is just phenomenal. Guys, you are doing amazing work. These are going to turn into awesome, awesome projects. And I know that um, that we're just going to keep getting better week over week. Everyone has been saying, oh my gosh, I've got ink sprays I've never used and I pulled them out and I had so much fun with them. Yeah, guys, um, we're it's just going to keep getting better. Um, I hope that you enjoy the whole rest of the challenge. And like I said, if you're not already a part of the challenge, please do um, head on over right there to join.bloomcrafters.com slash challenge and get in on this month long challenge. So not only are you gonna get techniques, you're gonna get uh, support from other crafty minded people just like you, um, projects, all sorts of sneak peeks of creative vision this weekend. Uh, we're doing Q and A, private Q and A right after the um, live stream here. So we're gonna take just a few minutes of break to you know use the bathroom and that kind of thing. And then we're gonna do a Q and A. That's just for the challenge participants. And we're doing giveaways. So we had a pre-challenge uh, link up and you had to just share a little preview of like what you had going on on your crafty desk. And our winner is, drum roll please, um, Kathy Y. She is getting a three month Technique Library subscription and that's a membership and she's gonna get three months access to that. So congratulations to Kathy Y. You are our first giveaway winner during this challenge. Congratulations. Whew. And there we go. Oh my gosh, lots of commentary going on in the chat. Looking good, everybody. So glad you are all here. Let's take a look. What's going on down on the desk? Let me pull out a couple things here. All right, today is kind of a, um, a set up and tear down kind of day. We're gonna be doing some set changes here as we go along. Okay, let's take a look at today's project. So here it is. I know you guys saw the preview in the um, cover art for today's live stream. Um, and everyone in the challenge already has the project sheet for this with the step-by-step -step instructions and all of the um, supplies you're gonna need and all that good stuff. So that is all already out there for all of our challenge participants, but we're gonna be making this live today. We're gonna have a ton of fun doing it. Um, and also, so guys, you should have your um, technique sheets. And I just wanted to show you, this is what my sheets look like when I have them done. I put some notes in here. I add a little sample and um, that's it. So these were our two techniques for this week, curved sentiments and saturated ink spray panels. And check this out. My book is like huge. I'm gonna have to like start a second book because my book is overflowing with techniques. And they just keep coming. I have techniques planned out through September <laughs> and they just keep going. So um, there's no end in sight for the techniques. All right, let me set this aside. All right, so here is, <laughs> yeah, exactly, Miss Tam. <laughs> um, here are some of the panels that I created. Now I did some panels in advance so that they would have time to dry. Um, because we are doing um, ink sprays, of course, it's going to take a little bit of time. I have my glass mat out today. Normally, I use the mat underneath, and we'll get to that mat um, in a little bit. Um, but we need to start off with some ink spraying, and I need to move like all this stuff out of the way so it doesn't get sprayed. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So what I have here is Bristol cardstock. And this is really great because it's um, going to absorb a lot of the ink. You can use watercolor cardstock. You can use Bristol cardstock. You can use um, uh, mixed media paper. The mixed media paper is a little thinner. So um, you just kind of mess around with it. Of course, this is all going to get nice and saturated. And I can't remember if in the technique video I use this or not, but these um, Sizzix sticky sheets, 
um, can be helpful. Sometimes they don't work out because everything gets a little wet and they don't really stick. But this helps to keep things from bowing up. And yeah, you know what? I wasn't going to do this. Bear with me for a second, guys. I'm going to bring in my side camera. I wasn't going to do it. Oh, there it is. Let's see. Can I get us a good angle here? Yes, I can. I want you to be able to see just a different angle. Let me just make sure that my colors are good here. And that color might get a little wonky on here. Hopefully not. Um, stand by. There we go. That's good enough. I just wanted to um, to be able to give you guys just a little side view, and I totally forgot to set this up. There we go. That'll work. Okay. Let's see what's going on here. My YouTube streaming is saying something funky. I think we're good. All right, maybe it's because I was too still for too long. I thought something weird was going on. Okay, here we go. So I've got my piece of Bristol cardstock down on my glass mat, a little sticky sheet underneath there. I've got tons of ink sprays, all right? You don't have to use just Tim Holtz ink sprays. I know we all have them, but you don't have to. Um, if you've got Dilutions, if you've got Ulta New, if you've got any brand of ink spray, right? They can be Distress Oxides, they can be Distress Sprays, um, they can be glittery, shimmery, whatever. Okay, so I've got, here we go. This is what I've got. Cosmic Berry and Puffy Heart. This is Ulta New. These have shimmer in them, so we need to kind of shake these up a little bit. And... Um, there we go. Sorry about that. YouTube was trying to scream at me about something. Um, and then I've got three Distress Spray Stains. I've got Kitsch Flamingo, Salvage Patina, Mustard Seed. And then I also pulled out the Salvage Patina Distress Oxide. And this one also needs to be agitated a little bit here so that it will um, get all of the good color out. Okay. All right. There we go. Okay. So let's get started with some spraying. Okay, so with our spraying, you're going to say, I don't know if all these colors are going to go well together, but just remember your color wheel. So this is like pink, so pink and red. So that pink and red, when you put that together with yellow, you're going to get orange. Um, blues and reds are going to give you purples. And of course, blues and yellows are going to give you greens. So we can use all these colors together. I'm going to start with a little bit of Cosmic Berry. Let's do it. We're going to ink this up. All right. Now, the key to this is to saturate. If we do a little um, less and just kind of like eh, spray a little bit around here, um, you're not going to really get the full effect. Now, I did that with this particular color because it's very dark. This um, Cosmic Berry is a very, very dark color. Right. So. We will now add in some Puffy Heart. And this one I can add in a little bit more. All right, and my spray nozzles, they definitely need to be cleaned on both of these. They're kind of gross. Okay. Hey, guys, so I'm seeing that some of you have not got your stamp sets yet. Um, hey, don't worry about it. Grab yourself a really large stamp set. Use something um, different. It will totally work. Okay, that's the cool thing about this particular project is that even though I'm using one stamp set, use something from your stash. This background is going to work with just about anything you have. All right, so I added in some mustard seed and you can see like I'm getting this cool red orange down here now. It's very, very neat. Let's add in some salvage patina. You can see all these really cool things happening all over the place. 
I want to go back to the um, Kitsch Flamingo. This is a nice light pink. Right, you see how saturated that is? I mean, this is like crazy ugly right now. Um, actually, in person, it looks pretty crazy cool. Um, but that's a lot of ink. I mean, it's just kind of pulling and swimming and um, just going all over the place. It's great. Just let it sit here for a minute. Let it marinate in its own juices. Let it move around. Do a, a little bit of uh, some co-mingling of colors here. I'm going to take a clean piece of Bristol and put it right on top. Gently pressing the two of these together. And isn't that gorgeous? It's spectacular. All right, so now I'm working with two pieces here. All right. Got a lot going on around the sides. If you want to like pick that up, you can do that. If you want to take another piece and like start you know, wiping up like this, you can. You're going to start getting like an even more mingled colors. It's going to look gorgeous no matter what you do. This is going to start putting some texture into your piece. Um, it does some really neat stuff. Okay, so coolness going on here. And then, of course, we can take some just paper towel and start wiping some of this off. All right. I like that it um, also leaves in like your paper towel texture as well. If you want to just leave it like this and keep it nice and smooth, just set it aside and let something like this dry, okay? It's um, really pretty. I want to get rid of some of those little bubbles there. Um, so Cece asks, don't I have color everywhere now? Well, I'm on a glass mat, so it'll be super easy to clean up. This one is absolutely woo, gorgeous. Um, so I'm not going to do anything with this one. I'm just going to set this one aside and let that dry. Um, the nice thing about the Bristol paper is that if I put it down like this, when it dries, it will actually go right back to flat. Don't put any heat on it, just let it air dry and it will dry flat. All right, this one um, I've done some pickup on and it looks gorgeous. Now, if I want, you can put another layer on here and try to get some different things going on. Um, so this is the oxide spray, which I think looks really great. And just going to dab a little bit. And that's going to um, give me some nice oxidation in a few little places. Um, and that's going to look really, really cool. And that's done. Like, I mean, you don't have to do anything else to that. Look at all those amazing colors on there, guys. It's so gorgeous. Okay, set that one Okay, so CC says, no splatter box, don't you have color everywhere now? Um, no, the color didn't really come across the front because I was angled more down and it's all on my glass mat. I'll be able to pick it up super easy. Okay, so this one here. Okay, what I'm loving is this like rich purple going on in here and look at these dots. I mean, look at that. It's so cool. All right, so I may not even do anything else to this one. I might just kind of... You know, get some of those edges on here. This is beautiful. I don't know that I would use this piece for this particular project because it has a lot of white in it. Um, but this will be great for another something or another. Right? So, like, none of this goes to waste. Um, you know, Tim Holtz says that all the time. Just sop it up. Gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. And so, really, now I don't have too much of a mess left. All right, so by smushing your paper together and by sopping it up with another piece, um, really, I used two paper towels, which is awesome. And then I've got just a wet rag here to clean this up. And that's it. That's it. All right. So if you're feeling like... Um, you're going to be messy. Definitely um, use a splat box. You know, you know your messy level. So there we go. 
So now we're back down to my regular mat. Okay. So normally we would just go ahead and let those pieces dry. All right. You can go crazy with the colors. You really only need to have three if you want to do some cool like rainbow type effects. A red, a blue, and a yellow will give you anything that you ever wanted, but we all have more than that, right? So lots of different things that you can create um, color-wise, look-wise. You never know what you're going to get. It's always going to be something different, all right? So I'm looking at these three pieces that I have already dried, and uh, these are ready to go. I'm thinking, I was thinking about this one. I like it because it's got this nice little blue bit here. But I think I'm going to go, no, let's use it. Let's use it. Let's see what happens. All right. Ink sprays out of white, too. Okay. And if we have time, we can do more than one. Maybe I'll pull out a different stamp set and show you guys a different option. Okay. And these can go off to the side for the moment. So once you've got your saturated background all nice and dry, ready to go, it's time to do some heat embossing. So I heat embossed um, the image on here. And I also did the sentiment. And we did a curb sentiment. So it's kind of important to make sure that you've got things all lined up. All right, so with a curved sentiment, let me give us a bigger view here. The thing we have to consider with these shoes is that they really fit a whole four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. So we're gonna pull the shoes down just a little bit, right? We're gonna give ourselves like an extra quarter of an inch there and then get the sentiment around, okay? Now, in the technique video for this, we talk about using <clears throat> dies to align. And that's super helpful in most instances because usually there's not like a nice curved edge around here to, um, to work around. And so let's zoom in so I can show you guys this. Okay, so if I'm looking at my infinity ovals, these shoes are kind of oval-y. You know, I can say, oh, if I use this oval, that's going to give me like just that nice curve around the shoe exactly the way that I want it. All right. So let's um, put our shoe all the way down in place here. I, I zoomed in too much. I wanted to show you guys what that looks like. Okay. So we zoom in to show you guys exactly where that goes. Now I've got my die. I'm going to close the window here. And grab some temporary tape. All right, so I've got my shoe is now grabbed. Cut my all right. Now you can use the sentiments that the stamp set comes with. You can find a different sentiment. Do what you want. All right. This I'm going to put like right around here. And in order to do that, we're going to open up our lid. Now, sometimes you can do this with the stamp, the other stamp in place. Sometimes you cannot. So here you can see that that die came right across. And if you want to, you should be able to kind of butt these right up against each other. And it'll work okay. In some instances, this doesn't work because whatever it is that you're trying to go around is not perfectly curved like these shoes are. Um, and you might run into problems. Um, in this instance, I can actually kind of butt my sentiment up against here. And I want to test this out first. So if I grab a piece of window sheet or you know just a piece of plastic or whatever you might have this is super helpful 
Um, and now I can go ahead and test stamp this and see what it looks like. So I'm going to use um, white craft ink. I'm not going to stamp up the whole thing. I just want to see what that looks like. And make sure that it looks like it's in the right place to me. All right, so there we go. That actually went around the shoe pretty good. So I didn't necessarily need to put the oval um, die on the back side to help with. It was actually pretty easy to go around the toe of the shoe. But if it didn't work out well, I would just go ahead and use the die and stamp that afterwards. All right, so that's going to look pretty good, I think. All right, let's get our paper in place here. So I need to move my paper up just a little bit. That's another good way. So if I put my paper all the way down in the corner, let's see where that sentiment's going to end up. It's going to kind of come right up off the edge here. I feel like I'm like near far today. Sorry about this, guys. Here we go. Okay, so you see how I'm um, kind of close? I'm going to move my card up to like the quarter inch mark on my Misty. And then when I do my shoe, now you can see I've got some extra room here. I can back that up even a little bit more. Let's go down to an eighth of an inch. There we go. I like that distance. So that gives me some breathing room up here on the top. And I like the way that looks. So let's, um, let me just show you. So you see how I'm like an eighth of an inch up off the bottom. Sometimes you have to do that. That's okay. All right. So now we get to heat emboss. I like it when I can do all of my stamping at once, like with the sentiment on it. That's super nice um, being able to do that. Um, so Lisa wants to know, how do I get rid of bubbles underneath a large stamp? Um, so this one happened to go down without a bubble. I didn't have to worry about that. Um, if that happens, what you want to do is lift up the stamp and then just kind of roll it down in place, hoping that the bubbles come out for the most part. If there is a bubble in there, um, just kind of press it out. Sometimes you can just lift up a little bit and then get that bubble to come to the edge and press it out. And then that ends up working out just fine. All right. I forgot. My anti-static powder. You know what's bugging me today, guys, is that I have to use my um, original Misty for this. Normally when I do a video, um, a live stream like this, I'm using my mini Misty, and it's so much easier to get that whole thing in the picture. Um, but the regular Misty is kind of big for live streaming. All right, there we go. Anti-static powder. Now I am using a white pigment ink for my stamping. And I like to do this when I am heat embossing in white because it helps hide any imperfections of my heat embossing, right? You can use just regular Versamark if you want. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but using a white pigment ink, if you've got it, can be super helpful. The pigment ink doesn't dry fast so you can heat emboss it without any problem. And the other thing is you're going to be able to see, like, did it stamp well? If it didn't, you can ink it up and stamp it again and make sure that you get everything covered, right? Here we go. So now we're just going to pop this in some white embossing powder. All 
All right, and that is ready to be heated up. All right. All right, so Bernice wants to know what is in my DIY anti-static powder, and it's just a uh, baby powder. I've got it listed down below. I've used all the tools out there, um, except for the most recent one from Rabbit Hole, and uh, they don't work. <laughs> I used to use the pouch for a long time. I used the pouch, um, but then one time I swiped it across something and it got ink on it, and then the next time I swiped it on something, it got ink on it on it as well and I was really bummed about that so I stopped using that and then I used a little um the we are memory keepers one that has a little brush on the end of it and that always got clogged so I just switched to a basting brush and um some baby powder in a container it works just as well and I can get a lot more on here um so that works out really well for me um oh and don't worry about it Bernice you can always ask you can always ask all right So I'm just kind of rubbing this to get off some of that baby powder. Get us back to that bright color that we have going on under there. All right, here we go. Cool, right? You could totally be done with this right now if you wanted to, all right? Um, we're not done, but we're not done. <laughs> But wait, there's more. We're gonna paint. Oh, paint. Okay. Um, in the challenge group, I know you've uh, some of you have asked about gouache. Gouache. It is opaque watercolor. Okay, you don't have to have gouache for this technique. You can use gouache. You can use white pigment ink, just smushed out on a palette and um, watered down a little bit. If you've got a watercolor palette that has white in it, guess what? This is gouache, okay? Um, if you have spray stain that is white, you can put a little bit of that out on a palette and that will work just as well too, all right? And I lost my sample. So this looks really cool all on its own, right? Um, this one is a little bit lighter than my original one, but it doesn't matter because once we add the white on top of it, it's going to be even lighter in those areas. So it's basically just something to kind of help mute a few of the areas and really let this color pop out. Let the shoe look like it has a little bit more dimension, all right? And it's so easy to do, all right? So whether you're using spray stain or gouache or whatever um, it's all the same all right so you're going to get some on a palette you've got some water and a brush and gouache i mean like literally a lot of people use gouache for um splatters 
All right, but you see how much I'm watering this down? I mean, I want it to be kind of milky white. And I'm going to add it over the top of the toes. And if that's too watered down, you can always add more to it. I may have gotten a little heavy handed with that. There we go. Just gonna go over the toe. And this is not artistry, guys. This is just quick swipes and paint and done. All right, and we're gonna get the edges of the chucks too. So if you've ever seen these kinds of shoes, of course they have like um, really thick white toes and they've got um, white walls around the edges. Um, even this little spot right here, Let's get that. You can go over it more than once. Um, Sue wants to know if a pigment reinker would work. Of course, it's the same thing that's in the pigment pad. So it's just kind of like having gouache in the tube, right? You just um, pour in a little dollop of it and do it. I think you might be able to water down acrylic paint if you want. Um, it might give you a gloss finish, which would be kind of cool. All right, so we're just painting those in. And then I want to get the shoelaces too. You can whitewash these as much as you want. Just don't make them as white as the white embossing, right? So you want there to be at least a little bit of a contrast. And when you put the white paint down, at first it's going to look lighter than it is. It's going to kind of soak into the color because you see like right now that one doesn't even look like it's got any on it. You might have to do a coat or two. that's okay you're better off doing a few coats and layering the color on than having too much to begin with and then trying to remove the excess right so if you feel like mm, that's still just like not coming up white enough just add another layer and it works So I am going to go around and do a whole nother layer on these guys. No big deal. So the cool thing about this project is that if you make multiples of these, everyone is going to look different because you're always going to have a different background. And the way you choose to paint it is going to be different every time. So um, they're going to all be unique. Um, but still the same, which kind of is nice because I don't um, I don't always like doing multiples. So doing multiples that look different is um, a little more bearable. All right. So, um, yes, Cece, I will be recording the Q&A for the challenge group, and that will um, go up on replay on Saturday because I've got to um, wait for it to save, and then I've got to do a little bit of editing um, to get it in place. So, yeah, um, that'll be up on Saturday. Because I know it's late for some of you. You got to go to bed, and you got to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> so. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. I appreciate it. All right. So for my challenge group, the new challenge posted today and the new challenge is to create your project and put it in the link up. And of course, we'll have some prizes to go along with that. 
so you definitely want to link up you never know you might it's all random so it's not you know it's not um merit based or anything i'm not saying oh yours is the best i pick you um it's all completely random so the more you enter the more chances to win there all right so oops you know i even think this guy needs like another layer Yeah, so you'll be able to catch up. Of course, the challenge will be open until Wednesday. So you've got plenty of time to catch up with the techniques and the projects. Um, like I said, this is the stamp set I'm using all month. Shop your stash and find a set um, that would work. This would look really great with flowers. I mean, if these shoes are not your bag, don't use them. Um, grab yourself a beautiful uh, flower set and um, go for it. Um, Paula wants to know, is there any other ink that you can use? Yes. Yeah, so Paula, like I said, you can use, um, if you have a pigment ink, a white pigment ink, you can um, use that. Just squish it out onto your palette and use that instead. If you've got, um, Paula, you might have the, um, do you have the artist's pan set from Ulta New? It has a white pan in it. You can use that. Um, for sure, because that's white. All right. I knew that was going to happen. All right. So basically any white water-based paint, um, I think, like I said, I think acrylic would even work. Um, but yeah, anything that's white water-based that you can water down, it's going to give you this effect. It's so cool. Uh, I think this would look lovely on uh, flowers or anything like that. So, you know, give it a give it an opportunity. Um, Copic Opaque White. I don't think Copic Opaque White is water-based, so I don't think that will work for you. All right. Poof. There it is, guys. So fun, right? I mean, we spent... Oh, let's... Hey, let's take a look at... They're not quite dry yet. See, I'm glad we um, didn't use these, but let's take a look at these. These will be gorgeous with that shoe on there. I mean, can you imagine what that would look like on there? That would look amazing. So I've got that one. This one I really like. I'm going to do something different with that one for sure. I love the purple that came up in here. It's gorgeous. And then um, this one was the one that has the... Um, uh, the Distress Oxide in it too. So that one's got a little bit of a more softer look in some places because of that. So, isn't that amazing like how quick an hour can go? And poof, we're done. So, um, and actually we're done a little early. Um, let me just show you guys um, real quick since we've got some time and I've got a few extra pieces. I want to pull out a flower set for you. I don't know which flower set to use. Oh, so I'll show you really quick how a flower set would work. This is um, Sketchy Floral by Altenew. So if you don't have the shoes, but you have sketchy floral, this one will work great this month. Oh, I love this stamp. Uh, let's use this one. All right. 
let me show you. You don't have to use the shoes. All right. Don't have to use the shoes. Right, so YC says she's using a flower set. Excellent. And Judy's going to use a big poppy stamp. Yeah, absolutely. So this is, I'm going to help give you guys an idea of what this will look like. And of course, the colors that you pick will change this a whole lot, right? So if you're not um, doing as bold of a color, remember your white's going to turn out a little bit differently when you paint that on there. So just keep that in mind. All right, so there we go. That's gorgeous already, just on its own. So pretty, all right, but if we add, okay, so um, for this one, I'll take my pigment ink since I've got it sitting right here. I'm just gonna smush some on my pad there. See how that's just water-based, it just works the same. So if I want to just do some of these. See how pretty is that? And then maybe some of these. There it is. So flowers, shoes, doesn't matter guys. Um, anything that you want to do that's got a nice wide open space where you can add some white paint is gonna look absolutely gorgeous. It doesn't have to take long either. Check that out. Beautiful. All right, and we still have plenty of time. Okay, guys, I don't know what I do with my other projects. Where did they go? They ran away. There we go. So there it is, this week's assignment. Create a beautiful saturated panel do some curved stamping, add in some whitewash, and you'll have some gorgeous projects. For those of you that are not in the challenge or that won't be joining us in the Q&A, I hope you guys have a great week. If you want to join the challenge, there is still time. So you can join. Go to uh, join.bloomcrafters.com slash challenge and join in on all the fun. We are having a great time, and I will see the rest of you at... 
5 30 so that's 40 minutes from now guys um, over on zoom you should be getting the links in your email you can go over to the um the dashboard and grab the link from there as well if you haven't registered for it uh, but you're in the challenge go over and click on the register button and you'll be registered right away and you can join so thanks guys i am so glad to have so many of you join me today i'm glad that you enjoyed today's project i'm looking forward to seeing a whole bunch of you over on zoom shortly and um, i hope you all have an amazingly crafty weekend and until next time happy crafting <laughs>